Hey, my name is Cedric Clavern. I'm an intern on the OpenShift Developer Advocate team, and I'd like to explain how you can use Builder to create, build, and update container images in both the OCI format and the upstream Docker format. Now, you're probably wondering, well, what is Builder? So, Builder is an open source Linux based tool that handles building container images but without the need of a full container runtime or any daemon installed. And so, it's perfect for continuous integration and delivery. Now, of course, Builder has similar directory structure as Podman, Scopio, and Creo, which we at Red Hat Developers have great content for on our website, and I highly recommend checking it out after you watch this video. As far as any background concepts you need to know, if you understand Docker container images, you'll understand Builder container images. And actually, the logo for Builder comes from the Boston roots of the project. Thus, a Boston Terrier is on the front of the Hepticon outline as a hint towards the Kubernetes project. It's cool, right? Now, our first step to working with Builder is, of course, installing Builder. Now, I'm running Red Hat Enterprise Linux Server 8 right now, so I'm going to run yum y install Builder. Or if you're on Fedora, replace yum with DNF or whatever your distribution uses for package management. Something unique about Builder is the great integration that it already has with Docker file commands. And you'll notice that Builder handles many of the same commands that you're already used to. Let's get us started and run builder-version and builder-help to see what available options we have and where we're currently at. Let's get to know builder and play around with some basic commands, such as pulling a container image from a repository. The command builder from CentOS will use the from statement, similar to a Docker file, and pull the CentOS-based image and store it on the host. In order to inspect the image, run builder images. And in order to display the running container, simply run builder containers. Now that we've been able to pull and display a container, let's clean up and remove everything we have with builder rm all. Something unique about builder is that while Docker won't let you remove a running container, builder will, so be careful. Okay, it's time to get hands on with builder and create an Apache web server that'll run inside of a container. If you've seen our Podman video, you'll notice some similarities, but I'll try to spice it up here just a bit. First, let's pull a Linux base image. Feel free to pick your favorite. However, I'll be installing CentOS with Builder from CentOS. You'll see the image stored on the host with Builder images. And now that you're in the container, you can use Builder to run commands within that specified container. Now for our case, we'll be installing HTTPD Apache web server using the command Builder run CentOS working container yum install dash y HTTPD. Or you can specify whichever container you'd like to use. You can use your favorite text editor to create the custom index.html file we're about to create or simply use the echo function to write a file easily. I'm going to do that here and use the command echo hello from Red Hat and save that to index.html and copy that file into the Apache public web directory using the command build a copy CentOS working container again our same container index.html into the directory var www.html index.html. Great work! Okay, it's time to run this container and configure an entry point to start our web server. The build a config command will allow us to do just that, and by creating an entry point, we can start HTTPD, and the foreground tag will allow it to continue to run. Additionally, we chose the specific container we wanted to configure with the last argument, which was the CentOS working container. We're almost ready to deploy our container. First, time to save our changes, and the commit command will allow us to do just that. Build a commit will allow us to choose our current working container, which is the CentOS working container, and we can give it a name with Red Hat website. And now it's ready to be used and pushed to any registry you'd like, from the Docker hub to Quay.io. Let's double check our progress with Build a Images, and we can see our awesome Red Hat website image ready to use. Another significant part of build it is the ability to build images using a Docker file, and that can be done with the build using Docker file command, or FUD for short. Let's take Dockerfile in as input and output an OCI compatible image. After creating my Dockerfile with some template code, you're free to use whatever you'd like. Let's save it to our working directory and run build a bud dash t fedora httpd to automatically default to using our Dockerfile and give our image a new name. To double check the progress that's been made, let's run build a images to show our new image and let's run the container image using a specialized software called Podman. If you haven't heard of Podman, it's wonderful and it allows for rootless running of containers without any container engine dependency. Once we run that command, we can check that our console is in fact running a web server and we're free to add anything to it. Awesome work. 
Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you're interested in or have any questions about this video, please feel free to head over to developer.redhat.com where we have plenty of resources to help you learn about Builda, Docker, and Red Hat OpenShift. My name is Cedric Clyburn. Have a wonderful day. Thanks.